Hi, this is Alfred with Crest LLC, and I don't know if you've noticed, but there's been some changes to the way some things look in Xactimate, and I thought we'd go over some of those. Normally, when there's updates, you can kind of go about your business as usual, uh, but this time there's some pretty significant uh, changes to the looks of things, and I wanted to go over them and tell you why and how to go back to the way you had it if you didn't like it. Those changes have been primarily in the 3D view, which affects a couple of other things, and in cabinets. They've added some lower and upper cabinets instead of just drawing them as a block. Now, the first thing that you may have noticed, or probably the most obvious thing, is the properties icon. If you're drawing a room, and when you click on that room, you get this look instead of the old look, which was the piece of paper with a little hand pointing on it. The reason is because they've changed the default on the 3D view, which affects this also, and the textures. So if you want to go back to the way it used to be, you can change it in your preferences. And the reason that it's showing up like this is because they changed the preferences, at least the default in the preferences. So if you go to your main page and click right here on preferences, and then click down here on sketch for your sketch preferences, and you scroll all the way down, you'll notice the view settings has changed a little bit. At least this top part here is. And what they've changed is they've now made this under 3D details, textured is the, the, the new default. Now, if you wanna go back to the old way of the way things looked, you'll notice that there's three different options and we'll go over all three of these options. You've got textured, classic, and solid. If you wanna go back to the way things work, click on classic and that's your old view. Now, if you're in a project and you wanna change that, what you can do is just right click on the on the sketch workplace not on the room on the sketch workplace go down here to view properties make sure you click on view properties not properties down here click on view properties right here and right here you can change the 3d details to classic and when you hit ok now you'll notice you're back to the piece of paper with a hand pointing at it but we're going to talk about these changes, so we're going to go back to where we were. View properties, and we've got three different options here. We've got classic, which is the old way, and if you, let me close this up and click on 3D, you'll see that's the way it has always, what you've been used to seeing. Let's take a look at the other two options. Let's change it now to solid, and in the solid view, 3D will look like this. It's not that different, it's just gray. And then if you go to the third option, which is textured, which is their default view now, it's gonna give you the option of showing textures on those walls. This is what they call their advanced view mode. Now you don't see any textures because we haven't put any in, but we'll get to that. Now, if you're in the texture mode, you'll notice a couple of other options here. I'll go back to view properties and you've got a couple of options here. One of them says default textures and one of them says outline. Now this outline is just simply what you have down here. You can set it here so that it always shows an outline. Default textures right here means that it's gonna actually put some textures in there for you. It's gonna pick some textures. So if I click right there on default textures and I hit okay, You'll notice now when I go to 3D, it's picked a wood texture there and what looks like siding on the outside. Those are the default textures. And they're applied to every surface. And those are going to be different for every room. For example, kitchens and bathrooms are going to default to tile textures. Bedrooms and living rooms default to a wood texture. Now, obviously, if you pick a different texture, it's going to show what you pick, but this is what it's defaulting to. Now, in the textured settings, we're going to go back to plan view here. You're going to notice your properties icon has changed like this. And the reason is because they split it up. This is going to be your textures over here. And this is going to be pretty much everything else. Notice if I click right here on this left side, you get what you're normally used to looking at, except that there are no finishes or textures down here. Remember, there was a little section down here where you could uh, add textures and and tile and carpet and all these other finishes. It was this display section right here. Well, that's now in this right section here. 
And you'll notice here, these are your floor textures since we selected the room. And you'll notice that if I go back here, this is where I left off, that there's quite a lot of selections for floors. There's a lot of selections there. And obviously some of these aren't going to apply. So like, for example, if I pick, let's pick wallpaper here. I've got the room selected. Will it put wallpaper on all the walls? I don't know. Let's try it and see. I'm going to hit apply there. Now I'm going to go into 3D. And I don't see it on the walls, but I see it on the floor. That makes no sense whatsoever. Let's go back. Plan view. Click. Textures. It says floor wallpaper. And it did put the wallpaper on the floor. So you can see that's pretty silly. You'd never want to do that. So we're going to go back here. Let's pick something. Let's pick carpet. That's a little bit more reasonable. Let's pick this funny looking one just because it's going to stand out most. I'm going to hit apply. Now when I go into 3D, there's my carpet texture. Now you can't put on a wall texture in plan view because if you click on the wall, it doesn't know which side of the wall you're talking about. So you've got to do it in 3D. And I happen to know in 3D it will work. I'm going to pick my textures here. I'm going to pick, uh, let's try uh, stone. I'm going to select that guy right there. I'm going to hit apply. And it takes a second or you have to click. And there it is. If I pick the inside, pick the textures. Let's go down to wallpaper this time. Let's, let's pick this dark one here. So, so it shows up a little bit. And there it is right there. Not that pretty. Let's go back to plan view. Now let's take a look at that properties window or that textures window a little bit more closely. If I click on the room here and I click on the textures, notice that there's also layers up here. That's what this little thing right here is. Right now we're on the floor. You see right there how it says floor? But if I click right here on the layers, I, I can now change it to ceiling. And honestly, I don't really see any option that would work on ceilings. So I'm assuming that they're probably going to make this a little bit more refined. But that's what the, that's what this button here is layers. If I go back, now I can go back to floor and I'm back on the floor. I can come back here. If I want to eliminate what I had, I can just click right there where it says none, hit apply. And now when I go into 3D, I have nothing on the floor. Now they've applied these textures to a lot of things. So like if, for example, if I put a door here and a window here, notice that they both have the options for textures. Honestly, most of those don't apply to the doors and windows. Brick, carpet, concrete, fabric. So you have that option on doors and windows, but at least for the moment, it's, it's not very useful. Now these options are available also for stairs, floor, ceilings, risers, treads, missing walls, which seems kind of silly. Why would you want to put a finish on a missing wall if it's missing? Uh, but the option is there and rooms and decks on floors and ceilings. You'll also note it, notice that there's a little grayed out thing here. It kind of looks like a color palette and that's exactly what it is. They're going to add colors or so that you can change colors. But right now that's still in progress and it has not been activated just yet. And lastly, in 3D, right now, if you go into 3D, you'll notice that you're, you're just basically looking at your building with no background whatsoever. You can put a blue sky now. If you come up here to view button, then skybox and pick blue sky right here, you'll notice it puts a blue sky in the background. And those are your new updates for the 3D view. Now, the other thing that they've made changes to, let me go back to plan view here, is uh, cabinets. You'll notice that if I come over here to my drop down in cabinets, I now have the option for a, low, a lower cabinet, an upper cabinet, and a full size cabinet. Now, if I just want to draw a block the way I've always done it, I can just click right there where it says block. And again, you draw it just the way you normally draw it. Now, if I use the drop down menu instead, and I say, give me a lower cabinet, it's actually going to put a cabinet on my cursor with doors. And when I drop it there, notice when I go into 3D, it actually looks like a cabinet. And you notice it's got drawers 
I can change that in my properties just by clicking on that cabinet, going to my properties, the left side. And I'm going to say, instead of making it drawers right here, face type, you see it? I'm going to say, give me doors. Now, when I go into 3D, notice there, it's a door. And I can tell it how many sections to have. Again, if I go back to plan view, notice right there, door, number of sections. I can change that to whatever I want here. First, I need to change auto here to manual so it doesn't automatically calculate the number of doors. And then I can tell it, oh, let's have two doors instead of one. And now when I go into 3D, there you can see I've got two doors instead of one. Now, if I leave it on auto, let's go back in here. Notice how it will automatically figure the, the number of doors depending on the size of the cabinet. See how many doors it's put in there? And again, you can change this to drawers if you like. Now the default on your lower cabinets is going to be three feet high, which is a standard height, and two feet wide. And obviously they're sitting on the floor. Your upper cabinets are going to be four and a half feet off the floor, which is pretty standard. And they're one foot deep, just enough to get a dish in there and two and a half feet wide. I'm sorry, two and a half feet high. And then your full cabinets are going to be two feet wide and seven feet high, which of course you can change any of these in the in the properties. So that's the majority of the changes in the August 29 update. Like I said, this is a work in progress, so some things are probably going to change. They're, they're, they're working on it right now. But this way, at least when you run into a funny looking icon and you're not sure what it is, uh, this video will hopefully help you out with what, what's going on. Anyway, have a great day and we'll see you at the next video. Well, that's the end of the video. If you like this video, give it the old thumbs up. I think it's down here somewhere. Or even better, subscribe so that you get to see any of the future videos that I post on here. Have a great day. We'll see you at the next video.